Hi, so today we're going to look at a solubility chart very quickly and, and you should be in your packets on page one for solubility and equilibrium or you can simply follow along with what I'm doing on the board here. So in front of you you see a chart that has a bunch of different compounds Ki, NaNO3, NH4Cl. They have names as you know, ammonium chloride, sodium nitrate, and these distant substances are actually dissolved in water. And you can tell that because if you look over here, it says that there's grams of solute dissolved per 100 grams of water. Now, let's look and see what else we're doing. We're controlling the temperature, right? This is the independent variable on the x-axis. I'm controlling the temperature. And what's happening? As I'm going from cold, 0, to hot, 100, I'm heating these different substances up and they're dissolved. How do I know they're dissolved? Well, it says grams of solute. Remember what solute was. You put the solute into the solvent and that makes a solution. What's the solvent in this case? Well, in this case, the solvent's water, okay, H2O, which a lot of the things that we have dissolved around us are in water hot chocolate, tea, soda, you. So the confusing thing about this graph is, if you look for a second, you have all these different substances. They're dissolved. This graph shows you how well they dissolve. And the confusing part is it says per 100 grams of water. Now what does that mean? If I told you that each of these substances dissolved, and they dissolved well in, um, let's say, I say NaNO3 dissolves better than NH4Cl. How do you know? I have to tell you how much water I dissolve it in. Because if I was going to tell you how, how much better something dissolved, and I was dissolving something in a coffee cup, and I was dissolving another substance in a swimming pool, then duh, the stuff in the swimming pool is going to dissolve better. So the key thing is that this let me use a different color. This 100 grams is equal to 100 milliliters. So whenever you see 100 grams of water, think 100 milliliters of water, which is, I don't know, a soda can is 250 mils, right? So about that much. So about this much water, not quite half, if I've got this substance, NaNO3, I'm dissolving it in a soda can full of water or a container full of water, and there's only a hundred milliliters in there, right, partly filled soda can, then that means I have a different soda can, same amount of water, and I'm dissolving KNO3 in that amount of water. So all this means with this 100 grams of water is that every single one of these substances on this graph is dissolved in the same amount of water. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Okay, so the next step is to look at what's going on on this graph. There are three kinds of lines. There are lines that go up, there are lines that go flat, and there are lines that curve down. So what does that mean? Well, if you look from zero to hot on this uh, graph, zero to warmer, what happens to the red lines? So look at KNO3 right here. What happens when I go from zero? Starts a little above 10, I don't know, 15 uh, grams, right? 15 grams of KNO3. And what happens as I warm it up? Well, as I warm it up, what happens? it actually increases in solubility, right? Because at zero degrees, I can put about 15, I don't know, 14, somewhere around there. And at 70, let's follow this at 70, where am I? Look at that, I can hold close to 128 grams. So that means that potassium nitrate, KNO3, as I increase the temperature from zero degrees to 70 degrees, it actually can hold more solute. I can put more stuff in my water. I'm not changing the amount of water. I'm actually changing the amount of stuff I can put in my water. Okay? So the curves that go up, 
mean that you can put more solute in your solvent. In other words, temperature increases, solubility increases. Now what about the red line? Let me get excuse me, the blue line on here. So let me get rid of all these annotations here. Okay, so we have lines that <laughs> lines that go like this, right? Solubility increases as temperature increases. Lines that go flat, like the sodium chloride. What's that mean? And it, it's not really flat. It starts out at 38 at zero degrees, and then it increases to 40 at 100. What kind of change is that? That's not much of a change. Maybe a little bit, but not much. So what's that tell you? It tells you that sodium chloride is not influenced by an increase in temperature. The solubility does not change. So let's go to the third kind of line. The third kind of line slopes down. Now, look at that. At zero degrees, I can hold a little over 90. And if I continue along with ammonia, and I go to 100, I can barely hold close to 8. So what does it tell you? As I increase the temperature from zero to warmer, what happens? The solubility goes down. And typically, these are gases. Okay, think about it. You put a soda pop on the counter, the, the soda goes flat. Why is that? Because as the temperature warms up, the carbon dioxide doesn't dissolve as much. It dissolves worse, and it leaves. So if you think about ponds or bodies of water in the summertime, fish don't swim near their surface because they actually don't have as much oxygen. The oxygen does not dissolve as well, so it evaporates, and so the fish hang out a little lower. So if you're on page one in your packet, you can answer the first uh, question. There's different exceptions other than solubility increasing, right? The solubility increases when lines go like this. Or the two exceptions, the two exceptions are lines that go, fl oh, lines that go flatter, right? Switch colors here, like this one. Solubility is hardly changing that at all as the temperature changes. The solubility stays the same. And then there are these lines where you start out at a low temperature, and at a high temperature, it's worse with solubility. So now let's learn how to read this graph, although we've sort of already done that. So let's look at 30 degrees, and let's look at potassium chlorate. So at 30 degrees, find 30 degrees on my graph, and I find potassium chlorate. That's going to be the confusing part. There's all these lines all over the place, so you really got to be clear about what you're looking for. If you look at 30 degrees, what's true? Well, let's come up here. 30 degrees, I can dissolve a little bit over 10. Let's just say 10. So, true, 10 grams of KClO3 dissolves in 100 grams of water, right, at 30 degrees. What's going to happen if I increase the temperature? Well, let's look and see what kind of line it is. Oh, look, it's a line that does this, which means as temperature increases, solubility increases. So if we look at 70, what's true? A little over 30. If we look at 80, what's true? About 40. If we look at 100, what's true? About 60. Okay? So there's, can you read the graph? So if you look, what's true? I have, at, um, excuse me, at 30 degrees, 10 grams of KClO3 dissolves. And at 80 degrees, 40 dissolves. That means I can put 30 more grams in if I change the temperature from 30 to 80. Make sense? Okay. So you try the problems on page one, and then I'm going to continue. You can pause this, and let's talk about what the lines actually mean. So if you look at these right here, every single one of these substances shows the, uh, the specific amount, the maximum amount that can be held in 100 grams of water for a specific temperature. So for example, if I look right here at KNO3, and I'm going to look at this temperature. What's this temperature? 70 degrees. 
I can hold 130 grams of my solute, KNO3, in 100 grams of water. That means the solution, right, my water, 100 grams of water, with my KNO3 dissolved in here, it actually dissolves and turns into ions. K plus ions and NO3 minus ions, they're dissolved and floating around, split apart. That means that's the most I can hold. I can't put it any more. I could put less, but that's the maximum amount. So the way you're going to remember this is there's three different places a dot can be on this graph. I'm going to go ahead and use the same color for the dots, okay? And let's stick with our KNO3. I could put this much in, and let's stick with a 70 degrees. I could put in 140 grams of KNO3. I can put in 130 grams of KNO3. Or I can put in 110 grams of KNO3. Right? Don't, that, that's what each of those dots corresponds to. I'm still at 80 degrees, excuse me, 70 degrees. But what's true about each of these dots, each of these amounts? Look where they are compared to this line. Here's the line. Okay? This dot right here is sitting on the line. If it sat on the line, you have a saturated solution. What's that mean? You can't put any more in, like a saturated sponge on the counter. If you have a sponge on the counter and it's saturated and you spill water, you can't pick up any more water because the sponge is full. So at 70 degrees, this solution of KNO3 in 100 grams of water is full. You can't put any more. What about this dot right here? 110 grams. Well, this dot right here is under the line. If it's under the line, it's unsaturated. What's that mean? That means you can put more in. Well, duh. If you look at the graph at 70 degrees, it will hold 130 grams max. If you put 110, can't you put 20 more in? Okay. So unsaturated is under the line, sat on the line is saturated, over the line, guess what? It's oversaturated. And we'll come back to that because there are some specific instances where it's called a different word, but we're not going to do that right now. Sometimes it's called supersaturated, but I don't want you to get that in your head because it's a special instance. Now what's that mean? Well, if at 130, we had 130, it was saturated, 130 grams. What happens if I put 140 grams in? That's 10 grams extra. What would you see? You'd see your container. You'd have your water in there, right? All this KNO3 would be dissolved. You have ions in here, right? They'd be dissolved. You wouldn't see them, though, like when you dissolve hot chocolate in water. You don't see it. It disappears, quote, unquote. The water surrounds it. But all of a sudden, I have 10 grams extra. 10 grams extra. What's true? Well, on the very bottom of this container, you're going to see 10 grams of my KNO3 actually sitting on the bottom. It's not going to be dissolved anymore. It's oversaturated. It can't hold any more than 130. So, if you look, the concentration of a saturated solution is when it's on the line. If you're under a curve, you're unsaturated. And if you're over, you have too much. And that much, uh, the difference, will be sitting on the bottom of your beaker. So let's try a problem. Okay, if I have a solution that has 70 grams of NaNO3, so it's fine, NaNO3. Here's NaNO3. And it has 70 grams. Here's my 70 grams of my NaNO3, right, my solute. Remember, this 100 grams of water. You can cross it out if you want to. All these are dissolved in 100 grams of water, or 100 milliliters of water. What happens at 30 degrees? What well, 30 degrees, what's true? At 30 degrees, I can hold 95-ish. They're telling me that I have 70 grams in. 
What's that mean? Where am I? 70 grams is here, and I can hold 95. That means I can put more in. So if you can put 95 total in, and you have 70 grams in there, how much more can you put in? I can put in 10, 25 more, right? Isn't that the difference? 25 grams? So I can put 25 more grams in. Okay? So this is an unsaturated solution because it's under the line. And I can add 25 more grams until it's saturated. What would happen if I had 30 more grams? Well, then 95 grams would dissolve and 5 extra grams would be sitting on the bottom because then it would be oversaturated, wouldn't it? Because I'd be at 100. Let's try another one. What if I have uh, 20 grams of KClO3? So let's find KClO3. There's KClO3 potassium chlorate. At 50 degrees, I have 20 grams. Look at that. Where's my dot land? It's on the line. It's saturated. How do I know that? Because it's full. It's sitting on the line. If it's saturated, then you're done. You can't add any more. What would happen if I did? If I put in 30, then guess what? It would hold 20 and 10 would be sitting on the bottom. Let's look and see one more thing for a second. If I have that, let's go back to that example. I was 50 degrees. Here you go. What would happen if I warm this up? Let's say I take it from 50 degrees to 90 degrees. I can hold 20 grams, right? 20 grams of potassium chlorate fits into 100 grams of water or 100 milliliters of water, same difference. When? At 50 degrees. What happens if I warm it to 90? I can hold close to 48. So that means I could put more in. I could put 48 grams total in. But then what would happen if I cooled it back down? It would only hold 20. And this difference would be sitting on the bottom. What would happen if I warmed it back up again and stirred it? And I warmed it to 100. Well, then I could hold close to 60. Almost like 58, almost 60, if you look at it right there. That means I could actually put more in. So as you can see, temperature actually does influence how much stuff you can put into water. And you already know that. You know that if you have hot chocolate and you make hot chocolate and you put it into cold milk or cold water and stir it, it's not going to dissolve. So what do you do to dissolve it? You stir it. You heat it up. If you heat it up, then it dissolves better. Okay? Those particles are moving around, there's chances for more collisions, and the water actually warms up and more dissolves. If you take that hot chocolate and put it outside in the snow, then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to cool down, and you're going to see hot chocolate, syrupy stuff on the outside, and when you drink it, it's not going to be dissolved. That's it for right now, um, and good luck, and I'll see you later.